What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Jaguar F Type, courtesy of Harrisburg Jaguar in Harrisburg, PA, of course. And so I have yet to actually review an F Type, so I am quite excited to explore this one for the very first time. So, as always, let's start with pricing. And so, of course, there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 F-Type. First one being the coupe, starting at $61,600. Then you have the checkered flag trim level for $71,900. R dynamic for $84,300. The R for $101,800. And the SVR for $123,600. And again, that was all pricing for the coupe. There is a convertible version as well for all those trims. If you wanted to go that route, simply add $3,100 to any of those prices. But so then when it comes to the engine setup, there are actually three different engine options available for this one. First one being the one we have today, the two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. This is gonna come standard with the base trim level and the checkered flag trims. And this one puts out 296 horsepower, 5,500 RPM, 295 pound feet of torque available from 1,500 to 4,500 RPM. Power is sent to the rear wheels through an eight speed automatic, giving you a zero to 60 approximately five 5.4 seconds. Top speed comes in at 155 miles per hour with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 30 on the highway. Next engine setup you have is a 3 liter supercharged V6. That's going to belong to the R Dynamic and it is actually available for the base and checkered flag trims. But this one puts out 380 horsepower, 339 pound feet of torque, sent to rear wheels or all wheels on this one through an 8 speed automatic. 0 to 60 comes in at approximately 4.8 seconds for the all wheel drive. 5 5.1 for the rear wheel drive, top speed 171 miles per hour with this engine setup, giving you MPG numbers 19 in the city, 27 on the highway. But so then the last and the most enjoyable engine setup being a 5 liter supercharged V8. With the R trim level, that's going to put out 550 horsepower, 502 pound feet of torque. SVR bumps that up a little bit to 575 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque. And in this engine setup, it is just sent to all wheels through the all wheel drive system power sent to the ground through an 8-speed automatic 0 to 60 comes in at approximately 3.9 for the R 3.5 for the SVR that's crazy top speed of 186 miles per hour with the R and an even 200 miles per hour top speed if you want with the SVR that's pretty darn cool MPG numbers is going to be the same on both trims, giving you 16 in the city, 24 on the highway. But so then next thing I wanted to mention is there are some driving modes located just to the left of the shifter there. It's going to be a toggle switch, but that's going to give you driving modes like rain, ice, and snow. But also if you press that toggle switch down, dynamic mode, and that is going to be the most enjoyable one for nice weather at least. Next, touching on the braking on this one, rotors are going to range from 14 inches to 15.5 inches depending on the trim level, and they do vary a good bits. I'm just going to leave it at that. Carbon ceramic brakes are actually also available if you wanted them. When it comes to the suspension and handling, there is an open differential with torque vectoring by braking that is going to come with this one. Open differential meaning it allows each wheel to rotate at different speeds, as opposed to a lock differential where the axle rotates at the same speed. But moving on, adaptive suspension system is going to come with the supercharged V6 and up. As far as ride quality goes, I didn't have any issues. I also do like how low to the ground you feel in this one. It makes you feel more connected to the road. Also didn't have any issues with cabin noise, even with this rather large power moonroof we got here today. Still no issues with cabin noise. I definitely like that as well. And when it comes to visibility, perhaps this is the only part where there might be a little constructive criticism is it's definitely not the best visibility as far as rear visibility goes, just because of the shape mostly, but I would say it's right along the lines of a Nissan 370Z or something like that. I'm sure you would get used to it, just not the best visibility because of its awesome shape. And so starting up front of the F-Type, LED headlights will come standard with LED daytime running lights. Front bumper is actually gonna differ slightly depending on the trim level that you go with. For instance, the checkered flag trim is gonna add somewhat of a lip kit, if you will. SVR trim is gonna give you a carbon fiber front lip, and of course, that base F type is what you're looking at right now. It's going to look a little different as well. And also wanted to mention up on the hood, there is added hood ventilation as well to assist with the little heat extraction underneath the hood. But then make your way to the side. Power folding heated side mirrors will come standard with integrated turn signals. And their side mirrors are actually going to come heated if you go with the checkered flag trim leveling up. Then zooming out a little 
little bit looking at the front fender there there always is that design cue in the f type definitely looks good there taking a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch 10 spoke alloy wheels will come standard on this one checkered flag trim is going to give you 20 inch alloy wheels and there's several other different wheel options available really giving you the ability to personalize and then make it your own but also one thing i wanted to mention on the f type because you don't always see this on vehicles is the door handles are flush with the side of the f type there so for instance when you press the unlock button those door handles are going to pop out so you can get in or when you press the lock button they're going to go back flush so it's kind of cool making our way to the back you will find a speed sensitive rear spoiler back there unless you went with the svr trim that is going to give you a fixed carbon fiber rear wing back there but just below that led taillights will come standard and below everything a single center mounted exhaust with a chrome finish is going to come with the four cylinder trim level that's what you're looking at right now of course however if you went with the six cylinder you're going to get a single exhaust with dual tips and the eight cylinder is going to give you a dual exhaust with quad tips so since we do have the four cylinder today you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip Now, since we are round back to open that rear trunk, easiest way is simply just press the button on the key fob. There is a button underneath the trunk there as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 14.4 cubic feet for the coupe. If you went with the convertible, though, you're going to get 7.3 cubic feet. Then make your way up to the front seats because, of course, there are no rear seats in the F type. This is a two seater. Front seats are going to come standard 12 way power adjustable with memory settings. That's going to come standard as well. And you will find a leather suede combination that will come standard. How However, there is full leather finishes available, which is actually what you're looking at right now. And you can get those front seats heated and ventilated as well. Then take a look forward at the steering wheel. It is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel power adjustable as well. It will come leather wrapped. The flat bottom steering wheel is available. And of course, you do have the paddle shifters right behind as well. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. It is quite a heavy duty key, very nice quality to it. Jaguar logo on the one side, flip it over Jaguar logo once again, along with the lock and unlock button to pop the rear hatch, of course, but there is actually a push button start just in front of the shifter there. So all I am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake here and press that engine start button. Then what started up, tachometer is going to be on your right, speedometer is on your left, and there is a small digital display up front there where you're able to see a ton of different things, including the speed limit of any given road, as well as the digital speedometer, of course, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. You can also check out your driving modes up there, though, as well. But then taking a look at overall interior quality, there is carbon fiber trim available, also a Windsor leather headliner available, and you almost never see leather headliner, so that's kind of cool that that's an option. Also a cool little thing thing that I've never seen on a vehicle before is to open the glove box there is a small little silver button just above the glove box that's how you're going to open up that one I thought that was pretty darn cool and I do like the frameless rear view mirror that we got here as well and when it comes to the climate control perhaps the coolest part is when you turn it on or when you turn the car on with the climate control already on those center vents they actually kind of pop out just above the navigation system I absolutely love that I always like the quirky stuff stuff that's a little different than the other vehicles that is pretty cool as well and you do have two usb chargers within the center armrest and all the buttons for the exhaust node as well as the air suspension just behind the shifter there but now let's make our way to the tech display it is a quite a large screen up front there a 10 inch color touchscreen display will come standard with bluetooth and audio streaming as well as android auto and apple carplay factory navigation will also come standard and when it comes to the sound system on the f type standard sound system is going to give you 380 watts it is a meridian sound system and of course that is the one we have today so let's go ahead and turn on the radio here see we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one for those of you thinking 380 watts who cares 380 watts in a two-seater is quite substantial so definitely no issues with loudness good bit of bass on the sound system so no issues for me and again with the two-seater you don't need more wattage than 380 watts really but the last thing i wanted to mention on the tech display at least is when you do put this f-type in reverse you will have a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead me into safety and so to start there are front side and side curtain 
airbags, six airbags total. Of course, if you go with the convertible, you're not gonna get the side curtain airbags. That makes sense, right? But also standard on the F-Type is a driver condition monitor. It kind of monitors your driving habits and lets you know if it feels that you are getting tired. So that's kind of cool. Lane Keep Assist will also come standard along with traffic sign recognition technology. It's also emergency brake assist and a front and rear parking monitoring system. Hey, so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.